All right. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Excellent. So welcome um, everyone around the world to our second in a series of panel discussions on cytometry markets. Before I turn it over to our moderator, uh, Jing Jing Zhao, I just wanted to make a few um, comments and reminders about uh, Cyto Innovation. So I'm here representing the Cyto Innovation Committee, which is responsible for this program uh, having to do with the commercial translation of cytometry technologies. Um, <clears throat> Over the past year, we've been um, working hard virtually to bring some interesting content to this group. Um, you may have seen uh, uh, our Innovation Stories um, series featuring interviews with uh, cytometry entrepreneurs. Um, and then this program here today is part of a new series of panel discussions aiming to help help us all understand the different uh, cytometry markets um, having to do with uh, hardware, software, reagents, uh, services. I'll have a word about that. Um, but I also want to highlight a couple um, other activities of Cyto Innovation, including our uh, ISAC International Innovators and the upcoming technology showcase at the Cyto Conference. Um, so first, regarding our, our panel discussions here on cytometry markets, this is the um, second of a series of planned events. Um, you can see the anticipated schedule going forward here through the spring as we uh, address different aspects of the diverse cytometry markets. So uh, stay tuned for announcements on those. Um, I'd like to highlight um, our ISAC International Innovators Program, which is one of ISAC's leadership development programs. Um, these uh, programs include the uh, Mary Lou Ingram Scholars, um, the SRL Emerging Leaders, and uh, just uh, two years ago, the new uh, Innovators Program. The Innovators Program offers uh, to selected candidates four years of ISAC membership, uh, CITO conference registration, travel support to the meeting, and involvement in ISAC, uh, including opportunities for networking and mentoring. Um, and uh, for everyone's information, the uh, applications for the class of 2022 upcoming um, are open now, so you can check out information on the ISAC website. The deadline for the applications is uh, January 31st. Um, uh, the ISAC innovators are, you know, deeply involved in Cyto innovation programming, involved in uh, many of these um, programs that you've uh, that I've discussed. Um, here's that's a good looking group there. Um, if you want to join this group, uh, you know, get your get your application in by the uh, the end of the month. Um, finally, uh, we're anticipating return to live CITO meetings uh, in Philadelphia here this June. And once again, the CITO Innovation Program will be part of that live offering, uh, including um, some keynote and panel discussions around interesting aspects of um, cytometry commercialization, um, the technology showcase, um, and opportunities for in-person networking. Um, planning for CITO 22 is underway with all the uncertainty. Um, we're still planning to have an in, in-person meeting in Philadelphia, um, and you can anticipate that applications for the technology showcase will be sometime in April of 2022. So with that, I will um, stop sharing and introduce um, Jing Jing Zhao, who is one of uh, the new ISAC uh, international innovators, and he's going to lead our panel discussion here on the Chinese cytometry market. Jing Jing. So, yeah. Oh, 
Oops, OK, so uh, can you hear me? Yes. OK, so thank you, John. Today we are very honored to have four appearance panelists. Uh, they all have very, very good stories to share with us today. Uh, the first is Professor Xiaomei Yan. She is a professor at Xiamen University, also the co-founder of Nano FCN, Xiamen China. Her company provides a versatile cytometry platform, especially for nanoparticles. And uh, Dr. William Li is the founder of WellGuru Tech, Shenzhen, China. He has almost 20 years experiences in the cytometry industry. His company offers four automatic photometers and high throughput fluorescence in the large diagnosis. So Tiff Liu is also my good friend. He is the founder of Cenglang Biotech, Beijing, China. He has been in the IBD field for more than 10 years, and his company develops compact flow stometers, including two laser, eight channels, and three laser 14 channels. And Dr. Peng Cheng is the founder of Karatech Bio, Suzhou, China. He aims to develop research tools, especially for digitalized biology, such as multiplex protein and single molecular sensitivity protein detection. So, okay, welcome on board. Let's begin today's seal. Today, our topic is cytometry market in China. We will go over the basic experiences of our panelists. So, in today's meeting, if anyone has any question, feel free to leave a message in the chatting room, and we will go to your questions at the end of today's meeting, if we still have some time. Uh, uh, 大家好, 我们在会议最后呢，可以统一来回答大家的问题。如果我们还有时间的话，谢谢大家。So okay, so as we know, flystometry is an extremely competitive market. So to me, it's very brief. The truth is market. So the first question came into my mind is, what made you jump into the cytometry industry? So maybe who wants to go first? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, well, yes, coming from my uh, eight years of working experience uh, in the National Flow Cytometry Resource of uh, the Los Alamos National Laboratory, actually, I have conducted research in the field of flow cytometry for nearly two dozen years. Uh, actually, the motivation for me to establish the startup company of Nano FCM with my former uh, PhD student, Dr. Sao Binju, can be ascribed to the participation of the CITO conference held in Fort Lauderdale back in 2014. At that time, uh, Professor John Nolan, also the moderator of uh, today's panel discussion, uh, was the president of ISAC, and he invited me to deliver the very first uh, state-of-the-art lecture uh, during that meeting, I witnessed the great enthusiasm of the audience uh, towards nanoflow cytometry. So really, thank John for the invitation, and I'm grateful to you. Thank you. Well, it's a very long history, sounds like. So maybe William Lee, do you want to go for a second? Sure. I mean, I'm working in this area for many, many years, and I worked Definitely. before I joined uh, uh, mine ray in 2010 i worked for uh, 16 years in uh, backman quarter then i worked six years in, in mine ray and basically wow. it's focusing on the flow cytometry and uh, cellular analysis so basically if you look at the history of uh, flow cytometry it is driven by scientific research and especially uh, in last two decades there are so many research applications has been transformed into the clinical application, then the instrument itself is lagged or behind the real clinical customer needs. So that's why, and we think we can do some better job for clinical customers. So that's why we start uh, well grow. <clears throat> oh, perfect. And uh, next is. A minute. Maybe I I, uh, <clears throat> I think uh, uh, it's a it's a 
uh, not a very uh, for me uh, about uh, 14 years ago 14 years ago when I joined in in Mandarin company I start to uh, development uh, developed the instrument uh, such as uh, the hematology uh, adv advisor uh, uh, and uh, from 20 at ten, I <coughs> I worked in Mandarin. Uh, at that time, my company decided to develop cytometry, so I began to research it. Uh, after four years, the first uh, clinical cytometry of China was uh, made out. During that time, I learned much knowledge about uh, cytometry. Uh, but uh, after that, Mandarin decided no longer to make it. Uh, and uh, about uh, two years later, when, when I have a chance, uh, I start my own business. Uh, so it's about uh, six years from 20, uh, 2016. OK, so almost yeah. uh, more than 10 years in the field. So next, uh, I think Peng Chen, could you please? Oh, yes, I uh, joined the industry not too much time ago. But I know the instrument for a long while when I was um, uh, doing my PhD collaborating with another group doing this HIV test. So we want to basically count cells, the CD4 and CD8 cells, the ratio of those two cells. And that's the first time I know this machine and it was really powerful. And uh, I joined the industry really a coincidence that uh, we started this collaboration with another startup company in China doing flow cytometry. And, and uh, um, we were we were actually focused on making those uh, fluorescent labeled encoded uh, microspheres, magnetic beads. And then uh, we quickly realized this is the, net, the future of the vision diagnostic. You can do this uh, very well vaccine diagnostic. So it really appealing to us. And then we uh, uh, feel like that we can do uh, some more things on this because uh, it requires some of those uh, spe specially designed particles that we can do um, so we hope that we can do some effort in this industry. That's really cool. Perfect, perfect. OK, so right now, after deciding to run business, the folding question, I think, for everyone is the innovation, because innovation will be your unfair advantage in the market to protect you, to benefit you. So to me, the question is, originally, where did you get your innovative techniques? And how did you get the money to financially support you? Mm -hmm. Whether Yan, you want to start first? Uh, okay. <laughs> Lady first, right? Right. Yeah, always. <laughs> we, keep, we always give you priority. <laughs> well, sure. I fully agree with Jing Jing. Uh, the call, uh, I mean, for every uh, tech company, it should have its own core technology. The core technology of nano FCM is a nano flow cytometry developed in my research laboratory at Xiamen University. Actually, this was achieved by integrating the strategies of single molecule fluorescence detection in a sister flow. Uh, this technique was originally developed uh, at the Los Alamos National Laboratory, but we integrate this with approaches. Uh, for reducing the background scattering of uh, the two windows or cis fluid uh, uh, from reaching the detector. So we were able to detect uh, uh, the single uh, silicon nanoparticles uh, as small as 24 nanometer and the viruses for let's say 27 nanometer or exosome as small as 40 nanometers. So the nano flow cytometry really empowers the flow cytometry, the uh, competence uh, in the nano world, so we can uh, uh, use flow, you know, because uh, the resolution is comparable to TEM, but it also offers the throughput of flow cytometry and also the multi parameter biochemical analysis capability. Uh, so I think it has a um, big application field in the future. And to finance, so because we are very confident about this technology, so, uh, so we did the self-financing uh, to start up the company uh, in the very beginning. And later, the 
the government uh, entrepreneurship uh, support fund from uh, local government. It's the Xiamen city and the Fujian province really provide us the great support. Perfect, sounds great. And so William, what's your story here? Well, uh, my story is a little bit long. Basically, as you look at <laughs> those commentary from uh, last century, 60s and the 70s, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, was by those in the by BD and the Beckman Quarter. And uh, we see a tradition of loss optometry, like a multicolor, multi-laser, and mm -hmm. I call those traditional. And also the image flow cytometers and spectrum flow cytometers, mass flow cytometers, et cetera. And also we see a, a lot of research is in the micro flow cytometries right now. And uh, there, are, there are two directions on flow cytometry industry. And the one is the, uh, it's the traditional, more parameter mm -hmm. and more flexibility for research need. And another one is basically is look at the clinical applications. So we think we have a lot of advantages in clinical applications. Our group basically uh, is from uh, a minority group. And so we basically we have done a lot of work on clinical uh, instruments. So we better, uh, we can do a better job for the clinical application. So if you look at the traditional cytometry, all of the techniques are well known. There's no, uh, something very uh, fancy. The basically is how those people make their improvement. Like we said, uh, image flow cytometry, spectrum cytometry, basically they make their own contributions to the, each area. But we think we can make contributions in the clinical applications. And uh, that's why uh, we have some advantage. In addition to this, and we also make our own magnetic uh, multiplex beads which is another area we see there's a tremendous uh, potential. Uh, later on, we can discuss a little bit more about this area. So go back to the financing, basically the venture capitals are, uh, are our uh, main suppliers of money. And also some of the uh, strategic uh, investors and also our uh, investment uh, companies like Danaher, uh, Innovation Center is one of our investors. <clears throat> okay, okay. So always focus on the uh, helping real patients. And uh, yeah, perfect, perfect. So, Tifu, do you want to go? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I think uh, I will thank my former company, Mandri. Uh, I think it's the uh, best medical instruments uh, company in China. Uh, and during I work in, in it, I learned uh, much knowledge uh, about how to develop the, uh, how to develop a, a instrument and uh, how to do the research work. Uh, I, I, I become an experienced engineer uh, from a student, I think. Uh, and so, so I, so on, I, I, I also uh, we are thanks to the maybe the network, the the social network, uh, uh, because uh, 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 in in the network I I met uh, Chen Peng and uh, other many friends, uh, so so I can do many uh, I can st uh, study many uh, things uh, from it and. Uh, uh, and so on. Uh, I, 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 I use the uh, by the network. I uh, met many my partners and uh, uh, employees, so my team become bigger and bigger. Uh, uh, so, so, so now uh, we can do uh, also uh, very important. Uh, I met uh, uh, my uh, how to say uh, my my buyers. My supply, my, my suppliers, and uh, and so on. So uh, I think uh, it's uh, very important uh, in this uh, uh, information society we can do things more. So okay, perfect. Uh, that's all. That's all. Yeah. Sure. Hi, Peng. Uh, yes. Well, frankly speaking, being innovative in China is a little tougher than U.S. Um, it, because it's always 
application driven, like uh, Dr. Lee said, um, it has to be clinical um, important significance to um, um, get more support from the uh, social uh, venture capitals, or, or like you has to be a um, um, uh, really sci scientific uh, significant to get government support, like Professor Yen. And mm -hmm. uh, yes, we we started up like um, actually a little close to Professor Yen mentioned. We started as a single molecule genome sequencing um, group that we <laughs> slowly migrate to all the clinical um, um, diagnostic um, industries. And um, um, that's where we actually started to get uh, venture capital support in the China market. And um, on the way that we realized that being innovative in China, that it has to be uh, has to be more um, more has to be more um, relative to the uh, larger amount uh, of populations of uh, clinical. It cannot be. Well, at least to us, for us now, it cannot be a, a tiny group of people that um, um, care about that. There has to be a larger amount of people who care about this um, um, uh, numbers, um, like how many people get uh, disease in this area. Uh, that's what we learned. Uh, and it's really good that because we have a very uh, large market and a very fast feedback loop for our products. So, um, we learned a lot, as Tifu said, and we met a lot of friends in this mm -hmm. uh, a very good uh, society. Yeah. Perfect. Well, let That's me great. make one comment uh, yeah, about this. Please. In 2015, when Tifu and I, we left Minery, and in that time, uh, the top management of Minery, Minery does not get enough encouragement to put more money on the, on the flow cytometry we made in there. <laughs> So look at it now, and uh, the money is basically is flooding into this area, and a yeah. lot of the capitals they want to put their money into this area. Okay, uh, sounds to continue some research in or development in this area. Okay, sounds very exciting. If anyone want to jump in right now, just it's your time. Don't hesitate. <laughs> okay, so next we'll talk about product development. So in this stage, you will make your product ready for the market. So I'm curious, what kind of bottlenecks did you encounter in bringing your products for the market readiness? So what are they are and how do you deal with them? Okay, our uh, yeah. So yeah, in, in <clears throat> our case, I think uh, it is uh, how to identify the right uh, target market. For example, in the beginning, we have thought uh, uh, bacteria analysis would be our market, but uh, it turns out that the uh, people wouldn't like to pay for it. So it is uh, uh, the, the great interest in extracellular vesicle research. That is actually the, the breakthrough point for uh, the nano FCM to open up the, the market uh, uh, step by step. So. And I realized that uh, uh, only when people um, find out that their current tools cannot mm. help them solve, uh, cannot be sufficient for their task, then they will be willing to uh, try the new te technology or to seek out for new tools. That, that's my impression. Uh -huh. um, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Sounds great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's next? Well, basically, as I mentioned, our focus is clinical market. So yes. if you look at the clinical market, look at the minery, look at back, Beckman quarter. So I learned also, is basically, is uh, the reliability is the second important thing after performance. Mm -hmm. So really, oh. if you have a reliable instrument for clinical customers, and you can imagine what is going to happen. For example, we, we keep uh, telling people the story. Look at the long line in the clinical lab of those patients. If your instrument is suddenly out of order or out of function, so you know what is going to happen. So <laughs> my suggestion is don't stay right under their window. You know your instrument is going to be out from there. So basically to tell you is it's how important 
the customer need and what is the second priority for them? What is the first priority? I know the performance, basically everybody knows you have to perform before you can sell to the customer. And yeah. after you can perform, what else is important? That's something our engineers needs to have the same vision to put reliability on their priority. So basically okay. that's the thing, it's our bottleneck is not every engineer is aware they have to they have to design the instrument very reliable. Okay, very good lesson, very good lesson. Maybe do you want to add something? Okay, uh, there are so many bottlenecks for me. Yeah. Uh, Okay, just the uh, most important one. <laughs> <I think. laughs> uh, the first, uh, uh, how to find a, a suitable partner uh, mm -hmm. and uh, to build a good team. Uh, so it's uh, uh, they need uh, um, much skills uh, for me. Uh, uh, and also uh, because the uh, satanchi is not a, not only a um, uh, uh, engineering uh, problem. Also, it's uh, referred to the medical uh, yeah. medicine and uh, uh, science, science uh, geometry, uh, bi 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 uh, biology, and, and so on. Uh, but uh, we don't uh, um, have many uh, friends or many uh, uh, experts. Uh, so uh, we need to uh, solve these problems. Uh, 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 it's a, it's a need time too. Uh, so uh, during these these years, uh, we we improved our uh, experience uh, little by little, and so uh, and, and now we can. Uh, learn about it uh, or more. So um, now it's uh, a little better than, than before. OK, wonderful. Yeah. Yes, David Dupin. Oh, yes, it's uh, like Tifu said, it's a multidisciplinary uh, research area. It really requires a lot of different knowledge from different fields. It's kind mm -hmm. of pretty hard because you have to translate between different groups of people. But I, I really strong, I strongly agree with Professor Yen's I uh, think because through the whole business, as I can see the same thing uh, that through the whole business decision uh, making process, um, through the whole, uh, let's say, the product development process, you have to always make business decisions. You have, always have to focus on the champion application or let's say the killer market that you're focused on. But the thing is that uh, it changes over time. Um, yeah. So you have to make um, really good decisions. Um, uh, those because the, the parameter changes like say when we are making those um particles that at the beginning we, we thought that as we, we need to make more and later on we we realized that we need to make more sensitive um yeah to um to yeah, single molecular sensitivity to, to fit in the application so um i think that's the really the bottleneck and i have to say that specifically for china market a little uh, another hard thing for us is that the um uh, say we're not Beckman culture. We're we're new uh, <laughs> we're new scientific <laughs> interest in China, China Chinese market, and it's um, it's pretty hard for for this local branding because even let's say for me, let's say when we want to buy a um, um, PCR machine, I don't know uh, some research tools. The first thing in, came in our mind that we want to buy something uh, maybe from the US. So it's yeah. it's 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 a little hard that yeah. way. So yeah. it's a little hard to find the your your first customers your. Your star customer, that your endo customers, right? Yes, that's, that's true. That's computation you ha we have to face. Yeah, same question, common question, I think here. So next, I think is uh, as important as product uh, development. I guess marketing is also on the top of your privilege list, right? So speaking of the market, uh, one question is a very important question is the price. And uh, so my question is. What type of price points are critical in China? For example, you can make a high price for your product and make more profits from a single sale, but the sales number could be low. On the contrary, you can give a lower price to your customers and you can sell more. And in eventually, the margins in total could be higher maybe. 
So what is balance here, do you think? Uh, okay, for, for our case, because the mm -hmm. nanopore cytometry is a new technology, so in the uh, early stage of the statement, so the technology is, as a product is not uh, mature enough, and also the manpower is limited. So we choose a high price and a high single product uh, profit to ensure good customer service. That's what we do. Perfect, because you are, you are unique, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I leave this question for the business analyst. Okay. <laughs> okay, sure. Your, your sure, question is too tough. How to make a balance of price and the profit? Okay. So, yeah. so basically, it's uh, for the clinical market, and that they always want to get a lower surprise and higher the productivity. That's really tough to answer in here until mm -hmm. we have a business model to analyze the balance between the price yeah. and the volume. Yeah, that's true. So how about uh, Tifa and Peng? You, 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 both of you also work, focus on the clinical applications, I think. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think uh, uh, every, uh, every uh, entrepreneur want to uh, sell their products more expensive. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a dream for everyone, but uh, it's not uh, decided by, by us. It's uh, decided by customer. Uh, if uh, the product is uh, not very good, you you have to uh, sell it uh, cheaper. Uh, yep. But if you have a good uh, product, good uh, uh, in instrument, uh, you can sell it uh, expensive. Um, and uh, I think uh, it's not a, a good choice to uh, sell it cheap for a startup company. Um, yeah. Because we don't have so many uh, ability to to make a larger supply supplement chain and uh, the quality control. Uh, so we, we we should sell less but more expensive. It's uh, uh, easier for our for us uh, engineers. Yes. Oh, okay. Very enlightening. So. Peng, do you want to add something or yeah? Um, I think for for uh, unique products like Professor Yan, then uh, you can make your decision on the uh, price. For <laughs> for a uh, more competitive market, that is really like Tefu said, it's a market dependent. And uh, um, as I said for the previous question, that we might be able um, to do a faster branding with a lower price and lower margin. And that's uh, probably the way it has to be for uh, some startups. Okay, perfect. So uh, as no, you just, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a comment for the clinical market. It's basically, it's like a, um, everybody knows a uh, printer and ink, right? If you buy our yeah. ink, you can get our printer free. Uh, basically, it's in IVD, a lot of industry are like doing that because we have oh. our reagent, and if you buy enough our reagent, <laughs> and we're willing to give you. A, uh, printer free, uh, <laughs> free. so you make profits from yeah Sorry. because you know the profit is is very high from the reagent okay so if you buy enough our reagent then it's fine we give you our instrument free for five years if you buy how many uh, how much how many reagents from us so we can calculate by the model say yeah we make enough money okay perfect good lesson good lesson Okay, so uh, just as the Peng just mentioned before, it's very hard to identify the early customers. So my next question is about early customers. How did you identify your early customers? Our lady first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, okay. Uh, I think More you tradition. need to uh, participate in those uh, international conference and to uh, communicate with people to see uh, what their uh, their interest uh, or what. and uh, for for us, I think, uh, uh, and also you need to have a good uh, probably for us in the case of research network, so people mm -hmm. know what you are doing and uh, uh, they would recommend to their friends to say uh, they have this capability. Maybe you can have a try. 
So that's our case for the Kodak, you know. <laughs> so, so our first instrument was sold to the Kodak, and you know, the spin out company from uh, MIT, and also the leading oh. uh, company for the extracellular vesicle uh, risk, uh, uh, industry. Yeah. Okay. So you really need to know people and and let people know what you are doing, what you are providing. Yeah. Yes, the mutual connection here. So. <laughs> Well, our case is a little bit different. So we always, before we knock the door uh, of our uh, clinical customers, we always look at their through their window first, what they have. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, and then so what they're doing, what is their daily pain, mm -hmm. and so how we can do something better for them. That's basically what we're looking for. So we identified automation is okay. the traditional uh, flow cytometry pain. So basically, we are put a heavy emphasis on those automation in the clinical uh, cytometry. So basically, that's the way we look at, we do our business, may not be good for all of the uh, area, but basically mm -hmm. we know uh, one of the pain point, which is heavily a pain point, mm -hmm. is automation, especially some of the labs that perform over 100 tests per day, oh. and they still have to use, uh, use their hand one by one to prepare the sample. So that's basically something we can help our customers and we can bring something to save their money or save their labor or make them provide, make them proud to tell their boss, if you buy this instrument, I can do something better or I can save your money um. or you can, I can take my vacation. <laughs> that's something we really look at how to bring the values to our customer. And uh, you have to make sure you bring them something, then, then they can accept your your uh, product. Otherwise, if you are is, is are the same, and how did you make them abandon those BD and the Beckman's instrument and use ours? That's mm -hmm. really hard. As uh, Paul mentioned, that we have to have heavy computations in the field, especially those two dominant players, BD and the Beckman. So it's not that easy that they will give the market to us. Yeah, agree, agree. So everything, the core is uh, your customer. So, okay, so do you want to add something? Yeah, I, I, uh, I think uh, uh, I met my uh, customer. Uh, one one uh, method is by my friends. Uh, they introduced me to, to others and uh, uh, others in the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, who who is uh, selling uh, the cytometry, uh, or some some people uh, who some companies who uh, produce the agent, uh, and so on. Uh, when after I met the, the these partners, uh, I can do things with them and uh, make uh, bring value to the industry. So. Uh, we can um, uh, learn about the uh, customer requirement uh, uh, from them. Uh, then, then we we could uh, uh, improve our products, uh, uh, more, uh, make it more robust, robust, and make it more suitable for for the customers. Uh, so. Uh, so we can uh, make more values uh, uh, to the market. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, we we basically started um, a uh, an academic collaboration. That's where we mm -hmm. find our um, original users. Okay. Okay, perfect. Everyone has your U methods. Perfect. So, uh, and uh, as we know, generally speaking, before you officially launch your market, your sorry, your product to the market, you may want to get a feedback from your future or potential customers first. So you will do some cooperation with them to test your products before you launch them to the market to make sure that everything can go well with your products in the real station. So and that uh, that is called beta testing, right? So my question is, did you do beta testing for your products? And uh, what focus groups of potential customers did you choose for your beta testing? Mm -hmm. uh, well, yes, um, 
in the early stage, because uh, uh, the, the market uh, is not like uh, for nano flow cytometry, is not like conventional flow. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, the market was uh, very small and uh, nobody uh, knows us. So we didn't uh, deliberately uh, choose the focus group. Uh, yeah. So any, any potential customers who are interested in uh, trying the flow nano analyzer, we probably would uh, uh, deliver our instrument for them to do, uh, to test. But of course, I think our internal uh, application development team is comprised of uh, research of people with different research background. And also, actually, my research lab, you know, we have probably more than 20 uh, graduate students <laughs> with different kinds of applications, but uh, we did. Uh, but it's it's also different for from beta testing. So our first instrument actually went to uh, the NIH. Then uh, yeah, yeah wow. beta testing, and they gave us a lot of feedbacks. And also, I think it it is especially critical for improving the user friendliness for mm -hmm. software. Okay, wow, that is something very important, I think, to the customers. <laughs> yeah, yes, software. Uh, so, uh, William, do you want to? Yeah, internally, we have a product ver uh, verification tool. And uh, mm -hmm. basically, they directed to a uh, report to me. Their bonuses are directly related to how many bugs they found or <laughs> the reliability problems they found. Okay, they don't report to the, to the uh, R&D or OPD. Otherwise, then those problems will be hidden. So basically, in this group, we have uh, certain requirements. Their requirement mm -hmm. is that they found the problems for the instrument before we really release the product. It's, it's a typical uh, R&D process. So externally, we don't use uh, the beta site. So basically, okay. uh, in, internally, we have so many tests we know we can perform. So we okay. call it control release. Okay, control release, which means we found some customers well, we first we found some uh, distributors. They have some kind of technical support capability, and mm -hmm. they give us a recommendation. Say they have some good friends or good customers. They have also have a good relationship. So we send those instruments to those customers first. Okay. If there's any problem, we know none of the instrument is perfectly clean after the release. From my experience. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so basically, when the instrument is released to the customer's hand, and we have done our verification by our way, when the customer really used the instrument in their way, they always found some problems. And in this yeah. time, we want to have a local presentation, and either it's a local distributor's uh, technical people, mm -hmm. so they can directly report the problem to us. We can guide them how to solve the problem. Okay. So there's no way we can bring our entire team to that customer. So basically, we have some connections this way to solve our problems. Yeah, so that's how we choose the first, what do you call the first rabbit? Or okay. the first, in English, you call the first rabbit. So that's why you are you are the leader in the in the Chinese industry, uh, Chinese telemetry industry, I guess. So you have very good network here. And uh, so, Tiefa and Peng, do you want to add something here? Uh, we, we uh, we made, we made the uh, beta testing, uh, I, I think uh, first uh, we tested uh, ourselves uh, mm -hmm. uh, because we, I, I worked in uh, in the Mandarin for eight years and uh, yep. during that time I, I, uh, I learned uh, uh, many skills to uh, do a robust, robust uh, uh, product. So uh, I uh, I'm very. Uh, I think it's very important uh, to make it robust. So uh, we we made uh, many uh, test uh, before we we sell it, and also uh, when I uh, began to uh, uh, make uh, the marketing, uh, I I uh, many friends of of, of me. Uh, they will introduce me to some people and uh, at that time during this, these years i think uh, the industry is uh, changing because uh, uh, the uh, mm, the traditional uh, companies like bd and uh, big man uh, they are 
products uh, have some uh, weakness in China market. For example, some some uh, some product is very expensive, uh, and uh, some is very uh, uh, hard to, uh, to 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 give the after sales service. Uh, so many many uh, uh, people in the industry they want to have a new cooperation with uh, with the uh, inner companies. Uh, Especially some some startup company uh, like us, uh, so so uh, we can uh, do the testing uh, with them, uh, and uh, because we have a good relationship, uh, we can uh, do it more. Um, we, we don't have uh, many uh, trouble in in, in some uh, in the in, uh, we we don't we we don't. Uh, I was, uh, uh, we don't worry about it. So uh, we, we do it by this by these ways. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Uh, yes. Uh, we also think ease of use is very important. So we actually support our administration people. Like people has no uh, scientific background to uh, try to use it. Uh, we do some beta testing with them actually. Okay. Perfect. So uh, another issue is about uh, regulatory bodies. I think uh, probably so what kind of regulatory bodies are involved in the process of making your product ready for the market? So for example, to me, I can guess maybe you need to get some official approval or some certificate from the regulatory bodies to make your uh, ego to launch your product. So how about that? Do you think? Do you know, Professor Yan? Um, well, it, well, in my interpretation of the uh, the so it's a I think the uh, quality control department in the company uh, is a must for technology company mm -hmm. to ensure the product consistent, especially to reduce the after sales costs. Uh, and also to enhance the customer uh, the satisfaction. Uh, uh, but this is probably especially the case for uh, large scale of production. Yeah, but in, in order for our uh, product to be able to uh, sold out uh, to Europe or USA, you need to mm -hmm. go through those uh, to get those uh, credit or re requirement. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's very hard, very challenging. But your <laughs> product must be very powerful, I think. <laughs> Thank you. True. Uh, hi, William. Sorry, you're, you're, you're muted, I think. Is that okay now? Yeah, perfect. Okay. In our case, uh, our cast, I mean, our customer, clinical customers, so our instrument is regulated by the uh, Chinese uh, National Medical Products Administration, we call the NMPA. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's, um, we have to follow, meet some kind of standard. Like we have in China, we have the flow cytometer standard, which is YY uh, T58. Mm -hmm. And in addition, and uh, we have to submit certain kind of documents and uh, to make sure we said what we did. Okay, and uh, make sure we have a controlled design process. That's basically is the NMPA required. And also the NPA's main function is basically uh, to, con to monitor your manufacturing process. Make sure you follow the instruction of your design. You have a good control history of your mod uh, modifications in the future. So basically we have to follow the requirement a and the process is not that easy. Sometimes, and uh, for for the instrument, and mm -hmm. take us. But uh, I mean, unfortunately, we are in the COVID period. It took us over one year to get oh. our registration done. Okay. Oh, oh, that's very tough. So yeah, definitely. And Peng Tefu, do you want to add something? Cheng Peng, you 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 first. Cheng Peng. Oh, I think regulation. I have no opinion. I have no opinion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. 
Well, regulation changes quite fast in China. That's a, actually a big problem. So actually, we are always learning uh, new things. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, like uh, Dr. Lee said, it always takes a long time. There's no other way, but it's good that uh, it, it needs to be like that, I think. OK, so OK, so finally, uh, we are in the stage of entering the market. OK, so as we know, your products, all of your products are very innovative. And uh, my question is, is it easy for Chinese market to accept some innovations? Because innovations mean something new, something unique, something different from the previous. And it's always followed by a risk for customers to try something new. So what about that, Professor Yen? Well, OK, I think um, for the new technology, as uh, you, you first you need to uh, uh, to develop some uh, key opinion leader users and so <laughs> it's like a, okay uh, mostly for for people in china if you say oh some very uh, internally renowned people or group mm -hmm. are using your product they they feel more confident probably <laughs> to use it but in our case i think uh, it's uh, uh, the customers in uh, east and south china they are more open to new technology and to try it um, and also, uh, actually, uh, we have more uh, more users than mm -hmm. customers. They because some oh. of them they, they tried and but they currently probably they don't have the uh, the uh, money to purchase the product. So uh, what they can do, they can use a third part service uh, to analyze okay. their uh, uh, samples. Yeah. Okay. And I think. Okay. Um, uh, important thing is mm -hmm. if you can have some like a KOL, a uh, key mm -hmm. opinion leader, and if yeah. they uh, speak out for you during the conference or publish uh, an article, say uh, how your instrument uh, perform. So that is a, a big uh, advertisement for, for us, actually. Yeah. OK, <laughs> so the key is the key person. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, you need perfect. to have good product, right? First. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, 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 that's the key. Yeah. Yeah, it, it flow cytometry in the research area is very tough in China. It, it's how difficult, uh, how did you uh, change your user's mind to say, and ours is better than BD and, and the back map. And that's really tough. And most of the PIs, they have uh, uh, United States or Europe working experience when they say, okay, buy our instrument, they always say buy BD or buy backward because I used those instruments before. So that's a really mind change, very difficult. But for the clinical customer, they're a little bit different. It's really oh. the value what you can bring to them. Okay. okay. So basically, I mentioned earlier, I said, what kind of key value we can bring to the customer? And uh, definitely there are some of the customers because they're pain and they really want to have a pain reliever. So it's a kind of a chance say, I mean, I have enough pain already, so let me take this pain relief. So basically it's like this situation for the clinical customers. Mm -hmm. And if the clinical customers, they also do some research, then it becomes a little more diff different. Mm -hmm. So in our cases, like uh, Professor Yan said, you have to have a key person. Definitely, you have to have a key person and key opinion, what he, what she called. Yeah. Uh, in addition, in the traditional flow cytometry, which is not the main focus of our, our company, yeah. and uh, the multiplex immunoassay, and based on our magnetic uh, multiplex beads, are the, our main area. So in this area, that's definitely there's no players, uh, other players in China, like us, we can make our own beads, we can make our own reagent. So we have some kind of advantage in this area. So we have a less competition in this area. And we're, okay. growing, we're growing much faster in this area than, than wow. the traditional uh, flow cytometry. Well, wow, very happy for you. So you have to make a different charges for different customers, something like. So yeah, so how about you, uh, Kefu? Yeah, uh, uh, I think first, uh, uh, for for our startup company, we should uh, 
make our product uh, uh, all the same with the uh, traditional uh, instrument, the classical instrument. Um, because we, we are new uh, new player in the market, uh, what we, we know is not very not enough, I think. Uh, but uh, uh, I think we can do more service or more other uh, service that they don't can don't can give for the customer. Uh, that's that's my opinion. It's the important uh, uh, innovation uh, for the new player. Uh, the, the the innovation should uh, come from the um, the customer demand. It's not from from myself. So if you can uh, make the problems, you can uh, make them make the painfulness uh, uh, less. Uh, you can uh, give value to the customer, and uh, then uh, the market will give you a chance. I think uh, it's it's so. Okay, the value basically, yeah. William, and you have the very similar idea here. So Peng, how about you? Um. Well. I'm a little disagree on the uh, Dr. Lee that we also make these, but <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's uh, it's yes, as as people as everybody said, yes, it's a um, um, it's a very cool market. It's growing really fast in China, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why we're all very interested. The 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 fundamental reason is the real reason is really solving um, clinical problems. So yes, I think it is actually accepting pretty fast, and also the government actually is supporting local companies. And uh, uh, despite changing regulations, but a um, um, lot of local um, um, governments are supporting uh, Chinese companies in those areas. Okay, so uh, let me check my list. Okay, so and I know right now I know so all of your products are very popular right now in China market in in, in China, and uh, so your customers just want more and more your customer your, of your products. So the next question is uh, how to scale up your production. So it was was it difficult to scale up your production, and did you need to find some existing companies to fabricate for you, or you have to build your own customer new factories for the mass uh, fabrication and what are the pros and cons here so maybe professor yen <laughs> well yeah yeah because our instrument is special it's really an uh, innovative and i don't think there there is some other company that can produce it so what we can do is to we build our uh, own uh, manufacturing uh, facility uh, as mm. you know you know um, there are many unknown factors uh, in the process from uh, for the transmission uh, from technology to products. And normally the first generation product, it will take uh, a couple years to wow. optimize the, uh, the performance and to debug. I think um, the second generation, it, it will be more smoother. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Dr. Lee? Yeah, we have our own facility in Shenzhen, and then we're also building our uh, second facility in Hunan. Wow, very exciting, very exciting. And beautiful. Tifu and Peng. Yeah, yeah, uh, for, uh, because for the uh, medical instrument, it must be registered, registered in China and in other countries also uh, like this. Uh, so we, we have to have uh, our own uh, facility um, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> because it's not a very uh, large scale not for not like the mobile phones and the computers it's just uh, uh, maybe maybe ten uh, hundreds of uh, products so it's not very not very hard to to, to do it I think perfect. So Peng, you also have your own factory in Suzhou? Uh, yes, we do. Um, it's like Tiff said, it's uh, regulated. That, uh, yeah. So you have to, right? Yeah. OK. No, not exactly to have to have your own facility, but you have your own facility. Everything is better controlled. OK. okay. 
this also yes. allows to have a second, uh, some other people make the product for you. Mm -hmm. but sometimes you have more trouble to control the process. Yes, yes, that's the main issue. Yeah, you will all, all you want to to offer your products the best of your products, I think. So uh, right now you are in the market, you are selling your products to customers. Uh, and I guess there are still some regulatory bodies in the market to keep everything correct. And uh, so what they are and what are their duty? What are their duties? So and uh, how do you communicate with them? So I mean, in the when you are selling a product, you may have to, uh, some regulatory bodies and to keep to make sure you are doing well, you are doing right, something like that, maybe. I, I think uh, probably we already answered some of the questions, these questions uh, before. Yeah, yeah and uh, for uh, research uh, uh, instrument, I, I don't think uh, that much uh, regulatory uh, guidelines you, you need to follow. Probably it's more of the case for the clinical equipment. Yeah. OK, so it's a bad question. So do we skip it? <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> okay. The kick the ball to the gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so another issue is the computation. As we know, the market is always full of computation. So what kind of computation did you encounter and how did you deal with them? Success or failed? Oh, but I think it's a fake question to Professor Yan maybe because you are very okay. unique. You are always success. <laughs> Um, well, uh, I have to emphasize that uh, actually we uh, work on uh, the computation with our open arms uh, because mm -hmm. uh, for the nanoflow cytometry market, <sighs> it's a really new uh, area. And uh, if more manufacturers uh, are jumping, which means uh, you know the market is attractive, is expanding, is growth. So we we need more manufacturers to like uh, cultivate this um, market. I think uh, we yes, uh, th that is one thing. Um, the, the other thing I think to, uh, in the face of competition, what we really need to do is uh, come down and uh, do good jobs on the mm -hmm. products and the services. That's the, the solid yeah, things we really need to focus on. Yeah. Perfect. So you want to have a bigger kit for the in the market. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Dr. Lee. Uh, I want to first make a comment on your last question. Basically, it's the regulatory. Mm -hmm. uh, regulator does not regulate, uh, regulate your advertisement. Basically, it's regulate your manufacturing process. Okay. So in addition to you have to support certain kind of documents, uh, show your design control design process, you also have your manufacturing is under control. So I mean, every year you have to submit some kind of documents to prove your manufacturer processes. It's well controlled. And sometimes they will send officer to your facility to check, are you really doing this? So oh. the best thing is regulate your manufacturing process. And for the computation, I, I want to say is I very, uh, very much agree with Professor Yan and do your job. Make sure you stay in your stra uh, strategic plan and to focus on your customer and and your customer will make the decision. So that's basically uh, the whole uh, computations. It, it's the same. If you don't do your job, then you will be out of window next. OK. Got it. So OK, sure. So Peng or TFU? Peng, you first. Uh, yes, I think bigger cake is the uh, is essential. And actually, I think the competition is really um, for 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 like Dr. Lee said, for clinical markets, we are actually competing with the uh, uh, dominating Immunoassay method right now in China, at least, uh, it's really chemiluminescent. So it, it's a new growing uh, technique. Um, we should actually face those competitions and um, redefine or, or build this uh, market together. 
So I wouldn't say it's the stage of any competition yet, at least for now. Okay. Jeff, do you want yeah. to add something? Yeah. Uh, I, I think the con competition uh, is uh, everywhere in China. Uh, that's why my first company, when I lived in Mandarin, its name is uh, Competition is the Sky. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. everywhere uh, in China. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, 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 extremely in, uh, in the country industry these years, uh, many companies uh, uh, become out. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, uh, what we can do is uh, uh, to do my best to make my uh, our product uh, product uh, Mm, more, more, more good, more uh, better, and uh, uh, have more cooperation uh, in the industry, mm. and uh, uh, to give more service, to give more special service that uh, uh, maybe others can't give. So it's uh, that's uh, what we choose. Okay, so and uh, just speaking of the customers, so right now the customer you are using your products, and so what kind of customer support should you offer to your customers? Like uh, for example, maybe I can guess you have to give some training, some solutions, or even some financial supplies. So how about that, Professor Yen? Yes, um, I think. Uh Generally speaking, um, uh, for, for the customers who purchase your product, uh, the tech the first tech support in the uh, beginning a uh, couple of months is uh, uh, introduction training or uh, or advanced training. But we found out uh, actually what they want, uh, they expect is a solution. It's mm -hmm. not just uh, equipment or uh, reagents. We really need to have the uh, capability to help the customers to, to troubleshoot their workflow process and to provide an overall uh, solution. For example, if they want to do extracellular vesicle analysis, so we need to uh, also help with the upstream sample preparation, separation, uh, purity evaluation, and the fluorescence staining, and then is the instrument uh, analysis. So I think. Uh, the tech support and give some practical uh, uh, suggestions to help them to enhance their R&D uh, uh, efficiency is very important uh, for, for us. Yeah. OK, so you are the expert first and then help them. <laughs> OK, Dr. Lee. I mean, our case is basically is train how, to, how the users how to instrument. Mm -hmm. and train them what is the application that we can provide. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes in our case, it's not like the, uh, Professor Yan, they have to help the customers how to prepare the sample, and we will help the customers how to explain the result. Oh. Okay, that's the, work, but that's, the, that's the job we are doing. So if they can understand the results better, they're going to buy more of your ink, a reagent. Okay, so okay. our our the purpose is sell more reagent to our customer. And after they get our instrument, how we can help them to mm -hmm. test more. That's the that's the whole uh, support we need to have. OK, so that means your your company ha hires some biologist or some doctors to we have an application your... specialist. Oh, application specialist. Perfect. So Tifu and Peng, do you want to continue? Mm -hmm. I, I have no opinion, so Peng, you can give your opinion. <laughs> well, I, I agree with Dr. Lee that the uh, yet we should have more uh, applications, more than sales. We do uh, more overall solution support, not just the uh, support on the product, actually support uh, on what they really need, mm -hmm. the results and the explanation. OK. So, OK, so at the end, I have another question is uh, what other license do you feel are necessary to let our audience know today? 
about uh, running a stomach business in China? What do you think, and then, and then three. Uh, if you are, uh, for our case, it's a very uh, a new innovative technology. Probably the situation is slightly different from the others. Uh, I think you you need to have the core technology, and uh, in the beginning of the business, you really need to cut down your uh, startup cost. Uh, unless you can uh, tell the time that uh, you can really have a product to, to sell, you can have some revenue. Uh, but I think so in our case, see, uh, uh, Dr. Sao Bingju, he, he is the CEO of the company and uh, uh, his, his PhD work was doing was uh, how to develop this instrument. And just simply by one person, he knows, you know, he can build up the whole prototype, including the software that really cut down <laughs> the, the startup price. Superman. Yeah, uh, and and also you need to have, uh, I think the market is like uh, in the beginning, very beginning, I said that we had a sort of, you know, the virus or uh, of, of course the virus uh, is, is another big market for us now though, for the vaccine or, or gene delivery vectors. But um, see, there is a huge market of uh, bacteria on that, but people can get around it with plate counting or some other techniques. So. You, you need to be lucky if it's a new technology. You need to really have a market. So I think we are lucky because the, the exosome research is a, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a following. Very, yeah, attracting a lot of uh, interest. So I, I think uh, in Chinese, it's like uh, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so you can translate it. Yeah. Red people, red opportunity, and red time. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Perfect, please. Well, I want to share with people is basically to start a philosophy business, you have to make okay. sure you have you have enough money in your pocket. <laughs> and uh, basically, uh, Professor Yan, uh, she is very lucky and she has a superman can do everything by her by uh by him own but unfortunately we don't have a superman and we have to build a team a group of engineers a group of uh, application specialists and uh, a group of uh, reactive engineers before you really get into sale and you have to estimate how much money you have to have before you can get a sale and people are not working for you if you uh, don't pay them in three months Okay, that's uh, that's the big lesson. Basically, is after that you have a team, then do you really have some uniqueness or advantages mm -hmm. compared with the competitors in the market? Okay, and don't want to be a boss and to be a boss. Mm -hmm. that, that's wow. all. Say. Okay. Okay, money, money came first. <laughs> okay, Fu. Yeah, uh, I think my license is to. If you want to uh, do something, uh, you must uh, resist on it. And uh, maybe uh, during the process, uh, uh, there are many uh, failures and uh, uh, many troubles. But uh, maybe it's because you, you are not very, uh, clever enough. Uh, and uh, with more and more failures, maybe you can become f clever and uh, then you will make things uh, smoothly and uh, uh, successfully so it's very important to resist on it yeah mm -hmm. the time will help you okay yes timing is a it's a server <laughs> okay <laughs> um well uh, the lesson lesson i learned is that the um have to make decisions uh cheaply and quickly and mm -hmm. uh, um and uh focus on one uh, app, key application and uh, try to find your cash maker as soon as possible, uh, not to spend too much of your uh, interest. Because for researchers, um, I strongly believe that everybody here in this meeting that we all have all sorts of interest in a lot of science and uh, technology, but that uh, for business is um, 
it's, 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 uh, it's not like that. You have to focus first and then expand more. Yeah. OK, very, very enlightening. So yeah, probably uh, we are almost around time, so probably we have OK, just uh, maybe we can just have one very short question and just give your very, very short reply for the last question. So my last question is the future. So I'm sorry I don't have a crystal ball to predict the future of cytometry development in China, but we are lucky today to have you for very, very uh, seasoned experts in market and uh, science and techniques. So how did you expect the cytometry industry develop in China in the next five years? Very short, one sentence, please. Well, I'm expecting to see more and more domestic uh, products and brands, uh, domestic companies and brands come into the Chinese flow cytometry market and to see the equipment of the flow cytometers, not only in the class A tertiary hospitals, but also in some, let's say, township hospitals. OK, Dr. Li. Well, if you're looking at the damage of COVID due to us, to the whole world, and you know the immunology is the research is expanding and mm -hmm. basically right now uh, most of the immunology uh, response is still in the cell level so the flow cytometry is basically a powerful tool to study the the cell response and the cell study so in the next 10 years i believe more of the immuno studies will transform to the clinical area and the flow cytometry area it's going to be explosively growing very fast in China. And uh, for the cost and the test efficiency, and uh, basically it's a multiplex testing is another trend to make it more throughput and lower cost. So the multiplex test, like we said, the antibody antigen test and the respiratory uh, pathogen and anti uh, autoantibody, et cetera. All of those, the multi-panel tests is going to be also expanded very quickly. Perfect. So it's a perfect time to jump in. It's not late. <laughs> I can't wait for that. Sorry. OK, Tiefu. Uh, I hope in, in the uh, future five to ten years, uh, we can be the uh, 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 famous player in the worldwide, all over the world. That's, that's all. OK, Dr. Cheng. Um, well, I was a chemist. Well, I'm now still kind of a chemist. I'm a chemist in undergrad, and uh, I've been using a lot of chromatography, like uh, LC. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe in that in the future for flow cytometry, actually, it's kind of the same idea for cells and, and microspheres as well. And um, um, I'm thinking that there um, might be a chance that this um, do the same thing that it has a lot of bundled technology. It can go, like Dr. Lee said, it can go with a lot of other technologies. So it's a key, com key component in our total solution to solve the problems. So uh, I think it's uh, uh, due to the fact that in um, China is growing on every uh, market in applications, not only clinical, but also all those uh, drug discuss discovery, all those different sorts of areas are growing really fast. Uh, there's a chance that we find a lot of applications here to bundle this te technology with the uh, bundle other technology with flow cytometry and i really believe this is uh, the one of the key component okay perfect very good time so okay thank our panelists for your for sharing your insights that are very very enlightening to me and also i think are very enlightening to our audience and good job fabulous so, John, do you want to draw some conclusion uh, here? Before that, can I make uh, some kind of wording for our company? And we're yeah, looking definitely. for all kinds of collaborations globally. OK, everybody interested and uh, can send your email or, or you can later on and uh, publish my email. Yeah, and by the way, I, I don't think we have enough time for the questions in the chatting room today. I'm so sorry for that. So, but uh, I think the audience know who we are and who who are who, who are the panelists. So you just can directly email to us or to me to our panelists. You can make your solve the problem this way. Okay, John. Yes, well, uh, very interesting session. Thank you, Jing Jing, and thanks to all our panelists. It's 
great to hear your stories and to get to know you better via this virtual networking. It's uh, not perfect, but it's the best we can do right now. Um, China cytometry market sounds very interesting, but actually a lot of the lessons sound universal. Focus on the customer's problems, focus on making your products um, excellent, um, and uh, you know, uh, do good work. Um, so great to hear from all of you. Um, I encourage everyone to tune in next month for another in-depth look at an aspect of the cytometry market. Uh, I hope to see many of you in Philadelphia in June, if possible. If not, um, at a at a CITO conference near you um, sometime. So again, thanks to everyone. Um, look forward to seeing you all in person or online soon. OK, so thank you for attention, my dear audience and our panelists. Looking forward to see you in our next event. Take care. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.